Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to verify emails, preserve submissions across devices, and also pull information from your CRM or your single sign-on provider about the user who's actually filling out your form, all just by adding a login page to your fill-out forms. So right here I have a pretty simple discount request application. So I ask for information about the person who's filling out the form, as well as the email of that person. But right now, the problem is that I have no way to actually know that the person who's filling out the form actually really owns this email. It could just be somebody that's impersonating some legitimate educational organization, and I would falsely be sending over a discount code. So instead of just asking for the email outright like this, I'm going to go ahead and add a login page. You see at the bottom left here, we can add a page to our form, and we select the login page. We'll see here that we can select from a different you know, type of verification depending on what we're looking for. We can do email, password, or single sign-on, but in this case, we're just looking to verify you know, with email. We're pretty much ready to go actually, but I'm just gonna change some of this copy here to be more focused on um, our discount request. So fill out discount request app. And let's say, you know, enter your email below. And once we've done that, let's publish our form and see all of this in action. So now once we open up this form, we'll notice that the first page of the form is no longer that you know, actual application. It's this login page asking us to verify the email that we entered. So let's go ahead and actually enter an email. And once we do so, we'll notice that we get prompted to enter a pin that should have been sent to my email. Let's go ahead and open up our email and copy paste this code that was emailed to us. And once we answer that, we are finally through into the application. We'll notice that we're successfully, you know, verified and logged in as the email that we entered. And let's just complete this application. So we'll say we work at a nonprofit and just enter some sample information. And we're through. So what we've done here is we've successfully verified that the person who actually filled out the form really genuinely does own that email. So when I go through and I have to, you know, approve all of these discount requests, I actually know that the emails are truly owned by the people who filled them out. And on the results tab, we'll actually see that email that they logged in with so that we don't have to, you know, ask for that email additionally on the form itself. On the left-hand side, we'll also add some more settings here now. So let's say in this case, I want to allow those users who filled out my form to be able to edit their discount request. So they might have filled out some information incorrectly and they wanna just go back and kind of you know fix that up. So let's toggle that they can edit existing responses. And once we've done that, let's republish our form. And once we refresh the page on the form that we had before, we'll notice that we're automatically actually logged in as the user. So I'm still submitting it as the email that I said before, but we also have this option to open up past submissions. So if I click this, we'll see that we have a submission that we completed a minute ago. So if I click this and open it up, it'll take us to that submission from before. So let's say I filled out all this information, but I forgot my last name. So let's actually put in a last name and let's complete our submission. And once we go back to our results tab, we'll see that that's successfully filled out this time. And instead of you know allowing them to edit the responses, what I actually want to do is I also want to limit to only one submission. In this case, I don't want the person to fill out my discount request with the same email multiple times. So let's just toggle that and see what that looks like. So once I do so and I refresh on this form, this time I get taken to this page that tells me that I've already submitted once. If I want to, I can log out and enter a different email. But in this case, let's just go ahead and leave it at that. And finally, you know, with this simple verification screen, I can also restrict uh, to a certain domain. So let's say that I know that only people from fillout.com will be filling out this form. In this case, it's not true because I'm asking external users to fill out this form, but let's go, go ahead and add that just for, uh, for sake of trying it out. So now, only fillout.com users, so people with some at fillout.com email, will be able to fill it out. So that's all for the basic email verification 
you know, on the login page. But let's go ahead and do some more complicated things now. So let's say that I have some employees that work for me and I would like them to request time off using a fill out form. So I've built to this form here. So I ask users to fill out a time off request. They have, you know, the dates that they'll be away, you know, some, you know, more information here. And specifically what I'm trying to do is I have this question that I don't want to show all of my employees. I only want to show this to engineers. So specifically it's asking for the, you know, like the engineering tickets that need to be transferred to other developers while they're on vacation. And I'm going to go ahead and connect this to my CRM. In this case, I'm using Airtable to store all of my data. So I have, you know, an employees database here and here are all my rows for all of my employees. So I have myself as the engineering department and I have a few other employees here. Let's go ahead and connect this all up. So uh, let's add a login page once again. And in this integration section here, we'll be able to connect to some database, in this case, Airtable. So let's go ahead and go to our integrations tab on our form use our Airtable connection. I've already previously connected, so you could pick from one of those or connect you know, from scratch. And let's go ahead and pick our employees base and select from our employees table. So what we're gonna wanna do is once we've set this up, we want to go back to our login page and notice that we now have the option to connect to that database. So if I toggle this on and select my employees table as well, we can select the email field on that table, which we notice is right here. So what happens out of the box here now is only users that are actually in my Airtable database will be allowed to log in. And you can do this with you know different types of databases like Airtable, Notion, HubSpot, various you know CRMs where you're actually storing your users. So what I wanted to do before was show this question only if they're part of the engineering department. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's open up this logic section. Let's say that we only want to show this when, and you'll notice that we have an ability to reference the person who logged in into this form. So we could have done this with our verified email as well, but I didn't really have a use for the email in that case because I wasn't connecting to a third party integration. But we can click in and say that we want to filter by the department being equal to engineering. So this is only shown when you're part of the engineering department. Sweet. So let's also display here just, you know, for the user's own um, kind of peace of mind that they're actually logged in as, as the right person and say, uh, you're logged in as and display uh, the name of the person. So, or rather, let's say the email. So this is coming directly from Airtable, all of this information. So we can, you know, kind of make our form fully dynamic based on what's stored in our database. So let's go ahead and publish this form now and see what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and publish. And once we're on this form, I'm actually previously, you know, verified from the different form that we built before uh, for the discount request. You know, I actually own this email. But if I hadn't, I would have to, you know, enter the, the email address again. But let's go ahead and fill this out. So we'll notice that we are successfully logged in as the email we input before. So this is pulling in from Airtable. And I am actually seeing this engineering tickets question because I am part of the engineering team. Let's go ahead and fill out this ticket and just, you know, enter some information here. And, you know, that was a success because I was able to kind of like fill out all the information that I wanted to. But let's go ahead and change the department. So let's change it to, you know, let's say human resources. And as soon as we refresh the form on this, uh, re refresh the page on this form, we'll notice that we don't actually have that question anymore because we're not part of the engineering team. So you can make totally dynamic forms based on, you know, various information that's actually stored in your uh, CRM of choice. So that's pretty great. And we've done a lot already with the login page, but let's go through and you know, kind of walk through the rest of the things that we could have done. So as I said before, we could have also verified with password login. So in the case that I'm going to just send this out to some select number of users that all have some shared password that they know of, I can just set some shared password. So 
just go ahead and set some password here. And once I do that, once we you know open up this form, we'll notice that we get hit with this uh, login screen instead. So if I had known the password, then I can get through and you know kind of fill out the form like we did uh, before. We also have the option to enable single sign-on login. So in this case, we can connect to let's say something like Google or Azure or um, any sort of you know Okta, any sort of login provider that you're using to manage your you know employees or even clients, let's say. And finally, we could have also gone through and you know customized that email that we sent for the verification pin. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do now with this you know pretty powerful login page. And the last thing I want to show off is the fact that you can continue your submissions where you left off, even across a different device. So in this case, I have my you know discount request app, the one that I had from before. Let's go ahead and fill that out again, but let's only go through and fill out the first you know kind of couple of pages. Let's uh, let's allow me to actually fill out this this form by um, not limiting it to one submission anymore. And we're kind of going to go through here, continue our submission, and uh, I'm going to fill out um, some basic information here. And I'm going to go to the next page and kind of stop there. So let's say we had a super long form and you know it was you know ten pages long and lots and lots of questions. I might not finish it in one sitting. So I'm going to go ahead and log out, kind of assume that I'm on some totally different device now. I'm coming back on my phone because I wanted to kind of continue this submission on my phone. I'm going to go ahead and type in my email again. So I'm going to re-verify. We should get our pin here. And once we enter this pin, we'll notice that we kind of get hit with the screen that says, oh, you already have a submission in progress. So this is really cool because, you know, if this form is really, really long and I started it on one device, now I get to kind of just quickly pick up where I left off. So if I, you know, see here, I'm on that page where I was before. And I also have all this information filled out that I was already, you know, kind of doing before. So I don't really have to fill this out again. And I'm just go ahead and complete that submission. And that will, you know, kind of pop up on, on the results page with all of the information, not only just the part that I left off on. So this is a great way uh, to kind of incentivize users to fill out your long forms and kind of get a better completion rate because they can just pick up where they where they left off. So that's pretty much all there is to the login page. You can build some really, really powerful workflows with this, you know, pulling information from your CRM or your database verifying emails from users that you know you kind of don't know about and even continuing submissions across multiple devices in the case that it's a really really long submission and you want to continue where you left off so i'm really excited to see what you build with our login page